Hey BC, Big Star 1000s with a um, new installment of uh, Gimme 10 with uh, the year 2009 and to backtrack a little bit um, Chris Christoph 4127 Basket from Switzerland um, is doing a series, he's been doing a series a look back to the 2000s or the noughties as we call them as well um, and He'd stopped at 2008 and I, I was following him, I was responding to each video. That was about three months ago, I think. Um, and then yesterday he decided to upload his 2009 entry. So I am responding with this Gimme 10. Some of the records or CDs that you're going to see uh, today are similar to the ones that he showed because, well, great albums, you know. Um, you know, often you you have the same perspective on great albums. You know, when you're kind of like-minded, um, as Chris and I, um, Christoph and I are like-minded, I think. But um, and then there's a there's a there's a quite a few other ones that you know are peculiar to 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 my own taste. Um, I'm having my drug of choice coffee today. Cheers to everyone. Uh, Champ Sound, I know you'll appreciate because you're a coffee fiend like I am. Um, and um, um, 2009 was a, was a pretty good year for music. I mean, some, some really interesting releases. And I'm going to delve into them right now because I don't want to waste your time. The first one was shown by, by Christoph yesterday in his video. And it's an obvious one. It's probably what was considered as the album of the year in 2009 uh, it's Animal Collective with Meriwether Post Pavilion it is Animal Collective's sort of fifth or sixth no, maybe fifth album I, I think, I don't know um, and um, it, okay well Animal Collective are a band from New York I think Brooklyn um, and they specialize in sort of experimental psychedelic pop um, or rock you could say as well um, psychedelic and experimental being key words in the in their in their approach to music with this they were trying I think they were trying to get to a, a broader audience uh, the songs are more polished they uh, they're more readily, um, how can I say, they, they, they present themselves into a more um, readily um, accessible song format, you know. Um, like if you listen to My Girls there, which is the lead single from this, it's, it's, it's a really, really catchy, you know, humble song. So um, I think they were trying to just maybe appeal to more people and then they'll never be mainstream that don't get me wrong animal collective will never ever be mainstream uh, but um, they're a fantastic man I urge you to check them out if you haven't yet and uh, my favorite animal collective record is strawberry jam personally I mean that's my favorite but sung tongs is great um, uh, and also well my personal favorites animal collective collective related album is Panda Bear Person Pitch, but I've said that many times, I, I, I tend to repeat myself a bit sometimes, when you love an album as much as I, as I, as I love Person Pitch, I, I will repeat that many times, I don't care, it's, it's, it's a great album. And there's quite a few bands from New York there that I'm going to show you, well another one, another band from New York is um, this uh, band called The Pains of Being Pure at Heart. This is the self-titled album. I think it was the first record. Um, bought this on CD at the time because I, I found it on CD pretty much straight away in my local shop. But um, I wouldn't have mind having a vinyl copy of it. But um, the pains of being pure heart uh, are, uh, I think, they're a five-piece, if I remember, um, and um, they. How can I describe the music? It's kind of, you know, a kind of a poppier, less shoegazy version of 
something like the Jesus and Mary chain. Um, uh, definitely shoegaze, like neo neo shoegaze, kind of you know in the sort of a primal scream, early primal scream. Um, kind of meets the breeders, meets Jesus and Mary Chain, a little bit of My Bloody Valentine here and there, but 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 nothing is muffled <laughs> like My Bloody Valentine, or and the vocals are very clear. They're very um, they're not uh, the, you know because a lot of the shoegaze bands, their vocals are really they're really flat. And you, you, you know they're very ethereal, um, whereas this is really vocally very clear. It's a great record. Um, if you want a sample song, try a teenager in love, and that would probably indicate what kind of music it is. Um, another band from New York. Let's continue with New York bands, and this was shown by Chris as well. Fantastic record, uh, The Catimist by Grizzly Bear. Um, and this is a, a fabulous, fabulous record. Um, there's no question. Um, I think they're best so far. Um, although Yellow House is very good too. But but I don't know. Again, we have sort of a brand of a different brand of psychedelic pop. I mean, I was saying I was talking about Animal Collective being psychedelic pop, but this is this is a slightly different brand of psychedelic pop. I love this record. Some. Some great and cheerleader is great and um, um, uh, hold still is fantastic and really good, just great band. Moving on, I don't want to spend six months on each record. Um, I'll continue with New York. Why not? Let's 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 do a let's finish off a New York uh, segment. I think that's it. That's it for my New York segment. This is an album that um, I really, really, I played a lot on release. I, I really love this record, and I haven't played it for a while now, and I think it's time that I play it again. Uh, it's the Dirty Projectors, um, Bitter Orca. Dirty Projectors are from Brooklyn. Uh, I think the chief songwriter is called David Longstreth, I think. There's two girls who's named... <laughs> They're there on the front cover. The names escape me completely at the moment. And uh, this is just indie rock. I mean, you know, what kind of indie rock, indie pop. Um, very catchy, very melodic, uh, uh, different, very fun to listen to. Um, and the lead song from this, as I recall, was uh, Stillness is the Move, um, which you should... Just, just sample that song. Uh, there it is. There's, there's several versions of it. Stillness is the move. Fantastic, fantastic song. Um, yeah, the Dirty Projectors. Um, great band. Moving on. Um, okay, two Australian records that are fantastic. Two great, great Australian records. I'll take a sip of my coffee before it goes cold. Otherwise, what's the point? So, the first one is one that's well known in the VC due to my insistence on showing it. <laughs> um, it's uh, the fabulous Pop Crimes by uh, Volan S. Howard, who sadly departed in at the end of 2009. I think he died. Um, was around New Year's or Christmas or New Year's Eve or New, even New Year's Day probably. Um, Ron S. Howard um, is a legend of Australian rock. He was in The Boys Next Door, which basically became The Birthday Party, which you know, you all know The Birthday Party. If you like music, you like you know The Birthday Party, Nick Cave. Um, and then he had a solo career, and his records are fantastic. Um, his other record, um, <clears throat> um, I have a, my memory is just not working at the moment. His other record, <laughs> check it out, is fantastic too. Um, the title of which eludes me completely right now. It doesn't matter. Um, Pop Crimes is amazing. Um, 
just everything is cool on this record. Know a girl called Johnny. Um, there's the title song, Pop Cry. There's a great cover of Life Was You Life Was You Make It by Talk Talk, another favorite band of mine. Um, and this is the original, obviously press. It's been reissued a couple of months ago, so you can get this quite easily. Um, but this went for up to a friend of mine sold his copy of Pop Crimes for $300 on eBay <laughs> and he funded a holiday to Queensland with the money. <laughs> Queensland being, if you don't live in Australia, Queensland is like north. North where Brisbane is. Um, and But this is a fantastic record. Um, it's kind of sort of neo post-punk kind of meets a bit of I don't know what you would call it. There's a bit of garage. There's a bit of kind of cinematic Ennio Morricone style sounds on it. There's it's it's a monster record. To another monster record, a double record. <laughs> this is this will be unknown to almost everybody in the VC. Maybe people from Australia will know this. This band is called Mum Smokes, as in mum, as in mother. Uh, and smokes was in smokes, okay? Mum smokes, and this is basically two records. I'll explain. This is two albums. One album is called this album there with this cover is called Easy. So look, there we go, Easy. And this other album there is called House Music. Mum Smokes is four songwriters from they are from, they're all from Melbourne and they are and they all contribute songs on this um, and it's all homemade as shown on the other <laughs> this is their you know their this their, their recording setup it's all made at home it's really lo-fi very catchy songs beautiful kind of kind of, you know, it has a Beatlesque feel about the song sometimes into kind of melodic, but it, the textures remind you a lot of things like Sonic Youth or, um, yeah, imagine the Beatles played by Sonic Youth. That's, that's, what, that's what some of it reminds me of. It's very organic like that and, you know, sometimes you have, you know, touches of things like Elliot Smith in parts but but it's very sort of um, you know kind of it has kind of a velvet underground sonic youth kind of s s sonic bass like the guitar sound and you know, they use a lot of electric guitars you know which um, um, instead of using acoustics you know, Often singer-songwriters will have acoustic guitars to, as background, but these guys use, use mainly electric guitar, reverb electric guitar, or um, so it has very textured kind of sort of indie rock, but in a very melodic kind of a way. Um, there, there were this was a massive underground hit in Melbourne in back in the day. I mean, I remember a lot of people listened to this. Um, House music and easy. Easy is the best of the two records, um, and you know you can listen to any of these. I think you can listen just just um, type "Mum Smokes" in, in in YouTube and and see where you can find. I don't think there's many tracks of this. This was never released on vinyl, by the way. So you know, if I wasn't buying CDs, I would never hear this. Um, continuing, um, here's a, a record that I loved. Back in 2009, and still now, I absolutely love, love this record. It's the, the XX debut record. I was lucky enough to actually see them on the tour uh, that year. And they, they played um, here at the Corner Hotel, and they were fantastic. Uh, they were three-piece. Um, on the album, I think they were four-piece, but live they were three-piece. And uh, Jamie XX... We did a collaboration with Gil Scott Heron on his very last album. Um, 
I think he was Gilscott Heron might have already passed away um, by that time, but anyway, it was it was a collaboration nonetheless. Um, he's great. He's playing pads with pre-programmed kind of drum sounds, and but he was playing them like drums. It's very cool. Um, yeah, the XX are, um, you know, they remind me a lot of uh, young marble giants, you know, and sort of a Welsh kind of post-punk band from the late 70s, early 80s. That's what they remind me of a lot. Um, okay, last CD of the bunch is Fever Ray, uh, which was shown by Christoph as well. I think the XX was shown by Christoph too. Uh, yes, February, she's in the knife, she's called Karen Anderson or something like maybe Karen, yeah, Karen Anderson, that's her name. Um, February, oh, there's even the poster in there. I didn't remember there was that, oh well, that's, that's it. If I was holding the record, it would look like this. <laughs> um, uh, this, this is a great album. Um, um, there was a song that I used to love on this, um, When I Grow Up, yeah, the second song, When I Grow Up. What a great song, just power, power music. Um, so Fever Ray is yes, sort of a, kind of a Kate Bush, but with lots of electronics textured in the background. That's what it reminds me of a lot. Um, a couple more records shown by Christoph as well, and uh, Fleming Lips, Embryonic. Um, yes, very, very psychedelic. I mean, <laughs> just look at that, really. Um, probably not one of my favorite Lips records. I mean, you know, when you've got things like um, um, Desert Songs or, I don't know, um, Yoshimi, or it's very hard to compare. Um, it's almost like comparing apples with with, with pears, really. Um, apple uh, apples and oranges. Uh, but but the, this is uh, this is very very good, nonetheless. Um, and you can see that they always try to reinvent themselves whenever they, they make a record, which is what I love about the Flaming Lips. They they really they really really try to you know every time to do something a little bit different, which is which is cool. Okay, last but not least is a uh, fantastic electronic record by a band from Bristol and they call Fuck Button. This is the reissue from this year. What a great record. Amazing record. It's really kind of abrasive, electronic, kind of like, you know, distorted neo crowd rock with like really insane beats and I've seen these guys live they're just insane they're just this just an insane insanely great band I mean if I have the chance to see them again I will and they're just they're just brilliant absolutely bonafide brilliant anyway that is it for me today 10 records from the year 2009 I hope you enjoyed and leave me some comments if you can be bothered otherwise just um, don't. <laughs>